So the syntactic bootstrapping hypothesis is this idea that maybe what children are, are using to figure out the meaning of words, not just verbs, but verbs are definitely uh, a target of this kind of hypothesis, but other words as well, but primarily using the syntactic structure, that is the syntactic frames, the linguistic context, using that structure, the order and combinations of words together to figure out meaning. And one of the earliest examples of this comes from Nagel's 1990, uh, where two-year-olds are using syntactic structure to guess aspects of word meaning, including the differences between transitive and intransitive verbs. So in transitive verbs are verbs that have an object. So there's a doer and a dewey, right? And so when you say the rabbit is gorping the duck, adults who know uh, the structure expect the rabbit to be doing the gorping, the duck to ha be having gorping done to it. So when choosing between these two pictures, they're looking for the rabbit to be doing something to the duck, right? As opposed to intransitive verbs where there's no object, you just have a doer, right? So when you say the rabbit and the duck are gorping, well, there's no object, so you expect they're doing some action, but no one's having it done to them. So you're looking maybe for this, where they're both doing an action, but neither is getting the action done to them the way it is over here. And two-year-olds have also figured this out, the combination of these nouns together in this particular order to figure out exactly what kind of action meaning we're talking about, something where you have a do-we or something when you don't. And. Uh, more recent studies by Juan and Fisher, Scott and Fisher, Messenger Juan and Fisher, um, found out that actually two-year-olds are pretty smart when it comes to this stuff. They can keep track of syntactic structures over the course of several utterances to figure out what a verb ought to mean. And here's some sample dialogue. So they're trying to, you know, figure out what this novel word blick means. And here's a transitive dialogue. Guess what? Jane blicked the baby. Hmm, she blicked the baby? Yeah, and Bill was blicking the duck. Yeah, he was blicking the duck. All right, so what kind of word is this? Well, it's a transitive word, so that would be something like kissing or hugging, right? As opposed to an intransitive dialogue like this. Guess what? Jane blicked. Hmm, she blicked? Yeah, and Bill was blicking. Yeah, he was blicking, right? So you're not having an object after it, which for adults signals an intransitive meaning, something perhaps like sneeze or sleep, right? And so the transitive one, for example, might be matched with an action of kissing for these kids versus the intransitive one for sneezing, and they, they're able to figure out what blicking, which one blicking was likely to refer to. And it, it actually gets even more uh, interesting because it's not just uh, transitive and intransitive, it's even more subtle aspects of verb meaning. So for example, this causal dialogue down here, Matt dacked the pillow. Really? He dacked the pillow? And you're like, okay, this sounds very transitive at the moment, but wait, yeah, the pillow dacked. So look at that, Matt dacked the pillow, the pillow dacked, right, it dacked, and you're like, whoa. What, what is happening here. But there are verbs that completely do this. They're sort of causal verbs. They have other properties to them. I'll show you in a minute what kind of verb is that. But think, what kind of verb does this? What does dacking mean, right? And then you have ones like this, an unspecified object. Matt dacked the pillow. Looks very transitive. Really? He dacked the pillow? Yeah, he dacked. Right, he dacked. You're like, okay, what happened to the pillow? There's, we're missing an object now. So before we swapped the object to become the subject, and that was cool. In fact, that's a verb like melt. Right? Matt, and you wouldn't melt a pillow, but imagine this is ice cream. Matt melted the ice cream. Really, he melted the ice cream? Yeah, the ice cream melted, right? So we have verbs that do this, and it's talking about a particular type of action that happens, right, to the object in this case. Uh, the ob it's happening to the pillow, even though the pillow is in the subject position, versus something like Matt dacked the pillow. Yeah, he dacked. Well, this is a verb like eat, where we can sort of optionally drop the object, right? So you, again, by looking at the way that these novel verbs are combining with other nouns, the orders in which they're combining, the orders and whether what swaps in this object or the subject position, we actually can get a clue as adults for what kind of verbs uh, these refer to, what kind of actions these refer to, and so can two-year-olds, right? Which is really highlighting that two-year-olds are a little syntactic bootstrapping masters, like they're really quite good at this.